this lady who uh, stood in front of a congregation like this and said, for us as a community to move forward, we must forgive the person who took my husband's life. And I will always remember that and be thankful for it. We are very thankful for you. You have some packages, and it's your turn. You're going to say what, whatever you want to say. Can I make it English? I will see Anna Bosco Rabana Katir as a Yamana Ayoma Lela. He will thank God a lot because uh, God uh, bring us together today. Wana Bosco Rabana as an Anina Kulana family winter Gibultuna Fikanisa down the Salim Akum, or Bogulokum Sukran Lokum Rabana Saikum, or Dukum Alkua. Uh, she say uh, he will thank God a lot because we are uh, you are guys you are welcome house here and we are in uh, Jesus Christ uh, we are the same and uh, there's no uh, different uh, in Jesus Christ so he will thank God a lot. Wana paskur al al gasausa barda san gibuluna o be al qalb al barid o Rabban isaidun wa yamul shukul ma Rabban huwa down. Uh, she says she's uh, thank uh, God a lot about the uh, pastor, uh, Luke, and Carol, and uh, a new guy. Uh, <laughs> Justin. <laughs> Justin. <laughs> yeah, Justin. And he said that uh, he hope uh, God give him a wisdom and to, to, to help us a lot. Thank you. We have a lot of things, <laughs> but we have a lot of things that God has given us to give us. Uh, she say uh, he she doesn't ask anything. She has uh, a little uh, gift. She went to give her. Uh, that's pasta. As a, a little things to pastor uh, pastor Luke. And the haja basid the pastor Carol. I can't say it for you. Carol. Carol. Yeah. And uh, the gift for Carol. And David, uh, who? Justin? Justin. 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 Yeah. No, For Justin? <laughs> yeah. Good guy. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's it. Rabbana Danilo, as in the Gadimulon, Mafruka and the Gadimulon, with Ternima, like in Mafi Muski, like Kuna Marajai, or Rabbani Barikun, where is Yudun Al Gua or Mohabba? Yeah, he has uh, some gift of a uh, song, or uh, languages, but there's no time. The next time she will bring it. And he said, thank for three, three pastors. And the next time, he will, she will have a song in our, in our language. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, let's give thanks for that. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much, someone. Well, let's uh, take a moment, stand up, greet one another, wish someone around you a, uh, a happy new year. I guess my microphone is dead. The batteries? I uh, know. Well, good morning. And as we begin worship, uh, we're going to be reading from uh, the book of Luke. So Pastor Justin is going to talk about a guy here in the book of Luke. His name was Simeon, and he was a righteous and devout man. Uh, and it was revealed to him through the Holy Spirit that he would not die until he got to see the salvation of the world, and that's Jesus. So I'm going to read uh, this first part because this is something that he praised God for that he was able to see, and it's something that we can praise God for this morning uh, because we know who that salvation is, and that is Jesus Christ. So I'll read that very first part, and then we'll all read the last verse together. So the word says, And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And when the parents brought in Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and he blessed God and he said, and let's read this last part together, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation. Please. 
This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise you. This is what living goes like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise. We see you break down every wall. We we'll watch the giants fall. Fear cannot survive. Speaking the ancient creed, the words of the Apostles' Creed, if you'll join me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Continue with our offering. I do want to take just a moment and thank you for your support for our preschool which uh, I think for the third year running, voted best preschool in Grand Island, do an awesome job of raising up our kids. If you're looking at becoming part of our preschool, we do start registration a new January 8th, so I'll encourage you to look into that. Let's uh, continue with our offering.
Cause all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much, I've nothing else fit for a king, except for a heart singing That's good. Yay. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, I want to just share with you, and I want you to think about this with me, this man named Simeon. And if you know what his name means, it, it literally means sign. And God came to him and said, I'm going to give you a sign. And think about this. What would it mean every day for you to wake up in the morning and your only job was to go to the temple and watch for the sign? the coming of the Savior. And every day you got up and you walked out into the temple and you looked around and you're like, I don't even know what I'm looking for. And day after day and week after week and month after month and year after year and you become an old man and you finally just start to lose hope. You're like, I, for, for, I don't even know what I'm looking for. I don't know who I'm looking for. And then one day it happens. This couple comes into the midst of the temple and they're pressed in with everybody. They're, they're bringing their son to be, to be circumcised, to receive the sign of the covenant. And something inside you goes, oh, that's him. That's the one. Pastor Justin's gonna talk to us today about that man, Simeon, and what it meant for him on that day to say, this is the hope of the world. I think about this at the beginning of a new year that some people come into this year with a lot of hope. Yeah, it's going to be a great year. Some come with very little hope. I, what's there to hope for? And all of us come to this meal and to this place where God says, here's why you can have hope. I'm with you. Whether good or bad, I stand with you. And so today as you come to the table, I want you to, to just bring in an honest way those places inside of you where you would say, I'm losing hope. I'm losing hope. Bring them to this, this altar and be able to say, God, thank you for the, this gift, the presence of your, your body and your blood in my life. And Lord, lift up that hope within me. Jesus gave the disciples that hope on a day when he took bread and broke it and gave it to them and said, take and eat. This is my body given to you for the forgiveness of sins. He took the cup. And when he had supped, he gave it to them and said, drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament shed in my blood for the remission of your sins. Today, we come, we receive the body and blood of our Lord. But most of all, my hope for you is that you'll come up here and say, Lord, here's that place in my life where I really am struggling. Give me hope. And will you just take his body and blood into your hands and know that hope is real and it's found in him. Let's come to the table of the Lord. Yeah. 
Thank you guys for coming forward. I think about this, that in the book of Hebrews, the writer says that all things are held together by the word of God. And you think about our world and what's going on in it uh, across the globe, the hopelessness that so many feel. And today you walked forward. And I want you to think about this, the hope of the world, the one who holds it all together said, when you stood up here, I'm for you. And I hope you know that and are able to walk away today knowing that he goes with you. Let him be your strength. Uh, we depart from this table in peace, uplifted by our Lord. We've got a great children's message today, so I'm going to invite our kids to come forward. Uh, come on up. Come on up, kids. I might need you later on. Don't run away. 
Good morning. <laughs> oh, it's so good to see everybody today. Welcome. And do you know what today, tonight is? It's New Year's Eve, and tomorrow will be a new year, 2024. How many of you are going to stay up till midnight, Mom and Dad? You'll thank me for this. How many of you stay up till midnight? Got that, Mom and Dad? They're staying up till midnight. Okay, well, we're going to have a message today from Pastor Justin in just a little bit about hope and hoping for things. And part of his story starts out with, um, there is this great crowd of witnesses they talk about in the Bible. All the people before Jesus was born, they were hoping that a savior would come. And they waited and they waited like over a thousand years. Can you imagine waiting a thousand years for something? For the savior to come. And finally the savior came. And then there was another man who lived in the temple and we're gonna hear about him too. His name is Simeon. And God had promised Simeon that you're not gonna die until you see the Savior come. So Simeon waited and waited and still no Savior. And then he waited and waited. And then Simeon was a really old man and Jesus was born. And Mary and Joseph took Simeon to the temple or they took Jesus to the temple to see Simeon. And you know what Simeon said? What I hoped for came true. Now my eyes have seen the salvation and I can die in peace. So I'm going to give you a little example of what hope is, okay? How many of you guys hope for something? What, what do you hope for? You want me to come back? What do you, what do you hope for? Um, for all of us to pray every day. For all of them to pray every day. What else do you guys hope for? Anything else? What? Um, papers. For what? Papers. Okay. What? I, 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 to be healthy. To be healthy. Wow. Well, I've got some things that people hope for, and we're going to make like a road map. Did you know that some people hope, what does this word say? A lot of times we take it for granted that we're going to have food, but there are people out there that don't have food, and they just hope for food in the next year in 2024. Um, let's see. What does this word say? Kindness. Kindness. And sometimes we hope that people will be kind to us, right? Like maybe friends at school. Or how many of you hope that you can be kind to other people, even when they're mean to you? Can you be kind? So we could hope for that. Okay, what's this one say that we could hope for? To do good, right? Maybe to do good at school or to do good at soccer. But do you know the Bible that says that without Jesus, really none of our works are good? But we hope to do good. And then the last thing that we hope for in the end is what? Heaven. That's where we want to end up. Now, we can hope for all of these things here, but do we know if they're going to happen? We don't, do they? So, let's see, I need a volunteer. Come here, you can volunteer. So, we're gonna try to get you over here all the way down to heaven, all right? You think you could do it? I don't, well, we're gonna put some obstacles in the way. Things get in the way sometimes of what we hope for. This is sin, that's an obstacle. Let's see, what else gets in the way of us going where we need to go? Like challenges that we have in life? Oh, like let's, let's, put, let's put sickness, we got sickness here. What's another obstacle we might have? Maybe greed, and oh, let's see, maybe disobedience, like disobeying. So now do you think you could get down there without falling? Okay, but what if I told you you have to close your eyes and no cheating, no peeking? Can you do it then? Because we really can't see the future, can we? We don't know what our future holds, so we're kind of going into it blind. But come on out, pastor. What we're going to do is, you know how the only way is that you're going to get down to the end? Is we're going to imagine that pastor's hands are Jesus's hands. 
and Jesus is going to hold on to you and guide you through the future. Now close your eyes, no peeking. Look, where'd you make it to? Yeah, thank you. Did you do it on your own? We can't do life on our own, can we? The only way we're gonna get to the future is if we hold on tight to God's hands. Were you scared at all when pastor was leading you? No, we, we can trust Jesus, right? So if you trust in Jesus and you hold on to Jesus' hands and you fix your faith on him, we don't have to be too worried about the obstacles in the future or what the future brings. You can go sit down, thank you, honey. So as we go into 2024, no matter what happens and what we've got in mind and our goals and the obstacles, I want you to hold on to Jesus' hand for me, okay? All right, fold your hands and let's pray. Oh, dear Jesus, thank you for coming. We waited long for your arrival and now help us hold on to your love every day because your love is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Amen. Have a good day, boys and girls. Give me one second. That's all. That's muted. There we go. Whoa, hey. All sorts of mic problems this morning, but in the name of Jesus, amen. It's that time of year. It's that time of year when we see a man sitting snug in his study, snow swirling outside as he's making a list, and he goes over it a couple of times, making sure that he has all of the names correct. And then his wife steps in, double checking the list just to make sure nobody's missing. If you thought I was talking about Santa Claus, you're actually incorrect. Of course, I'm speaking about the other tradition that comes this time of year, Christmas letters. Beginning every single year after Amanda and I got married, and I mean every year, we would prepare and send out a Christmas letter with a recap of what seemed like everything that happened over the previous year. Something that's supposed to be a fun look back quickly becomes a slog of determining what makes the letter, who moved and we have to get their new address. Do we really need to send a letter to the people we live next door to for one year in Georgia? The thing is, finally, in 2021, the year after COVID. We decided it wasn't worth it because you see, aside from the joy of being placed at Holy Trinity, not much else happened. So for that year and following years, I just went ahead and posted a picture onto social media doing what I like to call our proof of life picture. In the years since, I actually have deleted social media so I get a chance to send out my Christmas letter. There you go. You see, while I never particularly appreciated 
preparing our letter, it is a helpful reflection over the past year, trying to find and seeing areas so clearly where God is at work, even when we might not begin to realize it. For instance, last year, at, I wouldn't have any clue that I'd be preaching on New Year's Eve. See, I wasn't on the schedule to preach on New Year's Eve. I for sure didn't anticipate that I would be preaching this New Year's Eve here at Peace Lutheran in Grand Island, Nebraska. When considering Christmas letters and life in general, seeing how God's sense of timing works and how our lives are truly in his hands, it's always exciting. Now, personally, I can't say I enjoy preparing our letters, but I really do enjoy reading the letters that people send out. It's always fascinating to see where people went, how much their children have grown. And you know, the most important thing, to see if people who I know from high school and college are getting as gray as I am. You know, the really essential things in life. Christmas letters are also an excellent way to reflect upon the past year and what people might have experienced. It's also, though, sad to sometimes read through them, to see people who have been afflicted with different disease. Sometimes to read about how they've lost someone dear. And ultimately, to recognize whose letters you're not getting. Because over that past year, their voice, at least on this side of eternity, has gone silent. Regardless of your position on Christmas letters, they all have a pretty common thread. They say, this is the year we've had. We look forward to next year and all it'll bring. Christmas letters for Christians, though, I think, can be really be summarized by one word. Hope. Today in our reading from Hebrews 12, as well as in the gospel that we heard Daniel read at the very beginning from Luke 2, we see these same messages of hope playing out again and again and again. In Luke, we see it from the perspective of a man who finally has seen the one promised all throughout the generations. In Hebrews, we see a letter of encouragement to Christians who are facing pretty significant challenges as they navigate the realities of being Christians in a very hostile world. If they were sending out letters, I think you could easily summarize those as people who are hoping for a better year in the coming year. And also, people who are hoping that this might be the year when their faith can truly, finally become sight. The thing is, as we look at what hope is, it sometimes does feel like hope can feel so hollow to feel like hope itself is slipping away. It doesn't take a real deep dive to find all the different ways that we have destroyed God's glorious plan for creation. Just look around. We see things like homelessness and loneliness, broken hearts and broken families, consumerism, secularism, wars, rumors of wars, cancer, other illnesses, and that list itself could go on and on and on. And when we read the Christmas letters we get, we can see it pretty clearly. Perhaps not necessarily mentioned directly, but they're there. Maybe it's seen in a broken relationship somebody has with their child, or maybe a relative that isn't mentioned. Maybe it's in a really whimsical phrase somebody's attempting to use to try to lighten the severity of what they're going through. But it just seems out of place. Or maybe sometimes that pain can be direct. We lost grandpa this year. Our son and daughter-in-law stopped attending church. My cancer, it's return, it's terminal. And this will be the last letter you get from me. And every single one of us, every single year, can insert our own phrases in. During any year here on this side of eternity, we will find problems. We'll encounter situations that eat at the very hope within our life. We'll find, as Luther once said, that sin remains in the spiritual man for the exercise of grace, for the humbling of pride, and for the oppression of presumptuousness. You know, sometimes, though, it feels so hopeless. Sometimes it feels like, as Christians on this side of eternity, we've been humbled enough it can be easy to look at all the bad, look at everything going wrong, and wonder, where is the hope? If it feels hopeless to us, can you imagine what it felt like for Simeon? 
what it felt like for the Christians to whom the book of Hebrews was written. Both residing in a country under occupation by the Romans, both in different situations, but in a lot of ways very similar. We see Simeon waiting for the Messiah, the man who's been going for so long, waiting, living in a reality where he had been given a promise and he's waiting to see that fulfillment. If Simeon had been able to send out a Christmas letter, my guess is it'd have two words, still here. But the thing is one day it all changed. The man who'd been waiting for so long finally got to see that promised Messiah. And then we see Simeon's focus point toward the future. We see Simeon not necessarily knowing why or how, but we see his focus go from the present to what this child is and who he, what he has come to do. Simeon, tell Mary through the power of the Holy Spirit in Luke 2 verse 34, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel and for a sign that is opposed. It's eight days after this child has been born. And the cross already looms in the distance. The early Christians in Hebrews, they're also living in a reality where they knew the Messiah had come. They knew that he had lived and died for them and risen again. But they're waiting just like Simeon. They're waiting and eager for him to return. Because for them, it had to seem like everyone around them hated them. They're outlaws in their own world. Not only are they outsiders for the Romans, but they are outlaws within their own communities. They wouldn't have had a struggle sending out Christmas letters because many of them had been kicked out of their own family simply because of their faith. And not only that, but every single day their lives are quite literally on the line. Historians place the approximate date of the book of Hebrews as occurring during the reign of Emperor Nero. Yeah, that Nero. The one who burned Christians for sport. The one who tradition holds had both Peter and Paul put to death. The man who was so depraved and insane that early Christians were absolutely convinced that he was the prophesied antichrist from Revelation. The man who killed his own mother and was ultimately killed by his own bodyguards. If you're looking for a situation where it's easy to be hopeless, where it's very simple to lose hope in the future, you need look no further than the early Christians. They were well aware of the impact that sin has on not only their life, but on the world around them. But the thing is, even despite the hopelessness, there are so many beautiful examples of, these are beautiful examples of people who despite everything going wrong, clings on to the promise of the Savior. We see aged Simeon dutifully coming to the temple daily, eager to see the face of the one promised, ignoring what was without a doubt the strange looks and whispers he would get, seeking the face of the one who had been promised from ancient days, seeking the face of the one who had been promised to Adam and Eve, the face of the one promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The one promised to David and Solomon. The one promised to Elijah and Elisha. The one who had been promised from of old throughout the Old Testament. And one day, he's here. We can only imagine that joy that Simeon felt as he took that child into his arms and sang that beautiful song recorded in scripture, Lord, let your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people, Israel. That's Simeon telling people, there won't be a letter from me this year because the promise has been made and kept. Simeon can now rest in peace having beheld the face of his Messiah. And not only that, he can rest knowing that he is secure in the hands of the baby that he was holding. And he's so filled with joy, can't do anything but burst out in song. And likewise, we see the author in Hebrews in chapter 12 reminding the people that despite all the brokenness around them, despite what seems to be hopeless, we can always look to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising its shame and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. 
See, Jesus Christ has opened up the way of salvation for all who believe in him, and not only by giving up his own life, but by doing it in the most gruesome way imaginable. A way so horrible, Romans wouldn't allow it for citizens of the empire. But he did it because of the love that he had for his people. He's the one in whom faith is placed. Because you see, through him, all mankind has been redeemed. All sin has been forgiven. All the debt has been repaid. And the joy of being welcomed back as dearly loved children of the Heavenly Father is now ours. The people are reminded that because of all the world's brokenness, the life that they're called to live, it is kind of like an endurance race. It's a race that we the people gathered here today, we also join in with eyes looking to the future, knowing where that finish line is and what that finish line looks like. Because you see, we gather together today not really knowing what 2024 will hold. We know that during the year, there will be ups and downs. Some of us who are gathered here today, gathered together in the church here on earth, will be with the church in heaven next year. But while we might not know what 2024 will bring, we know who's holding the future. Because you see, the future is in those hands that were pierced for you and for me. The same hands in which that great cloud of witnesses from Hebrews 12 now rest. The same hands in which Simeon and the, book, and the author of the book of Hebrews rest. They are in the hands of our Savior, Jesus Christ. As we look forward to a new year, without a doubt, there's hesitancy and fear. It's common, common with the changing of any year. But no matter what happens, we know and can take solid hope that we can look toward Jesus in all things, who is the author and perfecter of our faith, who endured the cross for you and for me, and we are called to make him the center of all our hopes and dreams for the coming year. As you see, this is the same Jesus Christ who was held by Simeon just before his death. The same Jesus Christ who brought such an abundance of joy to his heart that Simeon could do nothing but burst into song. And if you're trying to imagine in your own life the joy that Simeon felt, you already got to experience it here today. See, you've already held the Savior in your hands, the one who endured the cross for you in his true body and blood. God's only Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the one who stepped into the brokenness of creation and the one who made the perfect world exposed himself to imperfection. The one who is the judge of all things placed himself under judgment. The one who deserves nothing but worship became the lamb of the sacrifice. The one who deserves everyone's love was despised and rejected. The one who owns all things lived without a place to call home and had no place to rest his head because with sovereignty and with power, God responded to the sorry condition of the world by sending his son Jesus to die. And he did it for you. And through his resurrection, the one in whom we place our hope, the one who holds all things in his hands, we know where our future ultimately ends because we're in the hands of the one who's seated at the right hand of the throne of God. We're in the hands of the one who's in this position and power and authority, the one who loves us more than we could ever begin to imagine. So as we look at the future, we don't know what it's going to bring, but we know what's waiting in the end. Because you see, someday, he will return with that great cloud of witnesses and all his glory and all the faithful here on earth and all those who have gone before will live forever in his glorious presence, bursting into joyful song. Because that's all we'll be able to do. Because we'll finally get to behold the power and majesty and glory of our Savior face to face. With eyes to the future. As we go into this new year, not necessarily knowing what 2024 will bring, but we go forward, placing our hope in the one who holds all things, including us, in his nail-scarred hands. Because you see, we're secure. Because our faith and our hope, they rest in Jesus Christ, our Savior. And that is something that we can put in our Christmas cards next year. Happy New Year. Amen.
Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever until that day that he comes again. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. Amen. Before we go to God in prayer, I'm back there praying that my mic was going to work. So everyone's gotten to use my mic today but me so far. Uh, but uh, I want to invite you, if you are not already part of our Prayer Warriors group on the Church Center app, uh, as prayers come in to us, uh, that way you're aware. Because I want you to resolve this year to be, be in prayer more. You know, whether it's just a few minutes a day or, you know, but take that opportunity to connect with God and speak to Him with what's on your heart and pray for others as well. Uh, so check out our Prayer Warriors group on, on the Church Center app. It's easy to sign up. And anytime we have something that needs to go out on our prayer chain, those are the folks who receive it. Uh, they've been praying for you. So join us and pray for them as well. Let's, let's rise and go to God in prayer this morning. Let us pray. Holy God, because of your love and faithfulness, we are surrounded by a cloud of faithful witnesses who have gone before us. May we also have faith to live by your word and our time, courage and endurance to persevere as we face our temptations and challenges. God, may we walk in their footsteps, learning courage from their sacrifice. May we learn to give so that others may receive and may we learn to love so that others may be set free. And may we learn to die to self so that others might live in you. Most of all, O oh God, may we join that cloud of faithful witnesses ourselves, looking to Jesus as the author and perfecter of our faith, leaving footprints that others desire to walk in with us and behind us as we live by faith in your mercy and your love and your grace. Oh, holy God, we know there are people around us who are hurting and in need of your, your healing and strength for both mind, body, and soul. And... Uh, this morning, we especially pray for, pray for Sandy Patrick, Rod Carlson, Connie Avey, Stella Patrick, Roxy Moose, John Haynes, and Evelyn Hans. And Lord, as this another year here comes to a close, we pray for your peace to reign on earth and in your light to shine into the dark areas of our world right now, like the wars in Ukraine that's been going on for almost two years, the wars in Sudan, been going on for so many years, and also the, the conflict in Israel, between Israel and Gaza. Lord, we pray for your protection over the innocent and families in, that are impacted by conflict, as well as our servicemen and women who are serving abroad. We do this because we submit that you are ruler of all. You are the Alpha and the Omega, and we place our trust in you as Jesus, your son, taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen couple of quick things I want to remind you about. All our Wednesday evening activities kick off again this coming Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. So that's Kingdom Kids and Middle School Confirmation. And I believe there's a financial piece, right, Jason? Kicks off as well. Uh, and there may be some adult classes too, but uh, check that out on the event calendar on Church Center app. Also on January 10th at 9 a.m. in the morning, we'll begin our next Grief Share group. Uh, it will go for 13 weeks. If you, are you, if you or someone you know is suffering from the loss of a loved one, uh, it's just a wonderful uh, ministry opportunity to come in a support group setting and, uh, and, and begin to heal and learn to go, as the, the program says, move from mourning into joy again. And so hopefully you can join us for that uh, January 10th, 9 a.m. And then as we head out into not just a new week, but a new year, please receive our Lord's blessing. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his amazing peace. Amen.
came, and he died, and he rose. Those giants are dead now. This is our God, this is who He is, He loves us. This is our God, this is what He does, He saves us. He bore the cross, beat the grave, let heaven and earth proclaim. This is our God, King Jesus. Remember that fear that took our breath away Faith so weak that we could barely pray But He heard every word, every whisper And now those altars in the wilderness Tells a story This is who 